was what I'm teaching today. Y'all, we've been saying for years, we are at the last hour. But I want to tell y'all right now, it's 11 feet. It's 11 feet. We are in the last minutes. There's going to be I got a question for y'all. How many of y'all for the last couple of nights have been having strange dreams that you remember? I know. You don't got to tell me. I know. He said your kids will dream dreams. That you don't tell them. He said that your kids will dream dreams. I am raising up young prophets. We are in a time of prophetic anointing. The reason why he's trying to break things off of us is because you can't take this stuff with you. The faith that I'm trying to take you to is what I need to sustain how this church is about to overflow. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You can't see it. You can't see it. Because with the, with the carnal eye, you won't be able to see it. This is going to require faith. This is going to require sustainability. You know when you work out, everybody always goes to the treadmill first, right? And you start off and you walk. You start off and you walk, right? So you can build up endurance to run, right? Once you run for a little bit, you speed up just a little bit, right? This sweat begins to pour. And you begin to get a little tired. But the next day, when you get on the treadmill and you run a little more, you get tired this time too, but not as quick as you did the time before. So you're building up his stuff. Y'all got to catch what I'm saying. He's got building up his dirt. He said this walk is not for the strong, but for those who will endure until the end. We are so easily manipulated. We are so easily distracted. I told y'all that. Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? I told you that he talks to me through everything because I've allowed him in every avenue of my life. Let me tell you why I did. He put me in submission. I didn't want to. He forced me into submission. See, my daddy used to call it the fool fantasy. When you hold somebody arms where they can't move, you can't do nothing but scream out loud. Where am I at? I don't know where I'm going. Because he had me in full submission. He spread me from everything that I had. I had nothing else to lean on but faith. Y'all gonna catch where I'm going. Because I ain't moving. I've been teaching the same thing since he's called me. And he said you're not gonna move. Because what they need is faith. See, I've, I've allowed him to get to every part of my life because I understand that. That there's nothing of me. There's nothing of me that will get me to where he's trying to take me. But it's only of him. So I have to learn to lean on him. I'm getting somewhere. I said we're so easily distracted, right? Since I walked in the building, and even if you saw me outside, I've been trying to figure out what do that boy got on his head? You see how easily distracted we are? You're so worried about what's on my head 
that you're not trying to get what's coming out of my mouth. We're so easily distracted. When he said, come out from among her, my people, right? What he was saying was, we got to stop these vain traditions. We've got to stop doing things the same way we've always done them. Let's try something new. Let's try something different. See, we get to a place to where we live for moments. If you be honest with me, you will know what I'm talking about. When you know something special is coming up, you start preparing weeks in advance for that thing. And everything you think about is for that moment. So you get tied to that moment. But while you're tied to that moment, his word keeps getting pushed to the side. And you keep getting closer to that thing. But if we open the book and understand his words, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Then all these other things will be added unto you. But see, we want it in reverse. We want to seek the thing. Once we get the thing, we think we can step over into his righteousness. But what we don't understand is we keep going around in this cycle because we keep getting the thing first. And he continues to have to break the thing all of us for us to step into his righteousness. Because without first being made right, there is no righteousness. I'm going to give it to you. I'll give it to you. Because I don't know no other way to do it. See, somebody asked, was I ordained? Somebody asked me, what some amount did it go to? Who talked it for me? He seemed to have some work. He seemed to do it. But who told him? Well, nobody. I got it from him. See, I said, if he could speak to himself, surely he can speak to me. But guess when I read the word, and I look at the characters in the book, I start to understand that one of them. He seemed to choose the hard thing. He seemed to choose the afflicted. He seemed to choose those that don't got much sense. Because if you look at his word, if you look at the things that he says, he don't seem to have much sense in. He'll take people to starve. And instead of bringing them food regularly, he'll rain men of them from heaven. See, this is the kind of faith we need in this time. There's getting ready to be some things that come up on this earth that we're not going to understand. And y'all won't get in there. You on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the, and the, and the TikToks and the whatnots. You own these things, so you you start to see some of these things. See, what we gotta understand is we gotta start believing this book, or else what we here for? What what are we here for? Why are we playing? What what are we doing? What, why are we just going in hell? What are we doing? Oh my God! What what are we doing? Is it just you never know what this book says? Do y'all understand what this book is talking about? Do y'all know that we're living in the time of the great reveal? Do you know what that is? That's revelations. That's the, that's the, what they call the day of the Lord. We are living upon those moments. It is 1150. And, and I want to ask y'all a question. Please be back to me. Who is he talking to in Revelation? Oh, is he talking to the world? No, no, he's talking to the church. He said he's talking to the seven 
charges. He's talking to saints. He gets things that he says in every scripture before he gets ready to say them to him. Do not be saved. Hey, listen to what I'm telling you now. We think we're saved. We think we're saved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we think we hold free. No worries. Conscience don't take this until I do. So we listen to the lady say that. And then you're going to go straight in. I don't want to get there. I don't have none of that for you because that's not going to keep it. You need to be kept. The word says those who will endure into the end. So it's no wonder why he continues to talk about faith. Huh? Do you understand what flesh is? Do y'all know what it is? I know we talk about it a lot. It's more than skin. See, flesh was the one thing that made Adam and Eve forget who they were. Flesh was the one thing that kept them out of the garden because they decided to lean to their flesh and give in to their desires. Oh, yeah. I ain't let it up. Y'all gonna keep me out before I not tell the truth. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. Every single day, we are practicing to be more and more like the world. There's only two sides. There's only two sides. He said you either be hot or cold. Because if you look warm, I don't know what to do with you. That's what I mean when I say we took to him in hell. No, if you're going to go, God said, well, I'm not going to get that to him in the hell. There's a time coming. There's a time coming, y'all. And we're about to start seeing some stuff that we don't quite understand. And if I don't tell you, you won't know. Because I was sent here to talk to his people. I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to. But I know I'm supposed to talk to you in groups. I know I'm supposed to get y'all in line. So if anybody else get on board, good. But I'm on the side. I'm on the side. Thank you, wife. I said I'm running over time when it was a man that was still on the bill of boat. They thought this man was crazy. Not like that thinking you want to rap on me. They thought he was crazy. But while he was building the boat, they say he preached for 120 years. Saying, hey, this one is coming. See, what we don't understand is that he had no idea what rain was. Because they never saw it. They never touched it. They never felt it. So I'm assuming they were saying, this crazy man talking about spring. What is that? He talking about something going to fall from the sky. I don't see nothing. But he kept building. Now the Bible says that the boat was so big that he had to have angels help him build it. I know y'all don't believe nothing, but we'll get into that another time. So he kept building. Now, they are looking at things that we wouldn't understand today. I need y'all to understand that. So why am I talking about this? I'll help you understand. He kept building and he kept saying, the rain is coming. Oh, man. So I'm assuming around that time, it must have been 11 people. It must have not been 11 o'clock no more. 
We were still dealing with the last hour. We were still with the last minutes. See, what y'all don't understand is, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Revelation, the disciples said, the ones who was talking to him about so much stuff, they said, man, you keep talking about these end times, all right, all right, all right. So what would be the signs? What's going to be it? Because, you know, we need something carnal. We always need something tangible. We don't want to leave no faith. What are the signs of your coming? And when will these things be? I got These things, it will be just like the days of Noah. So he said it would be just like the days of Noah. What was happening in the days of Noah? What was happening, y'all? Oh, they was just having a ball party. There was some more things going on, but I don't got time to teach y'all all that today, but we're going to get into it. But they was having a good time. It was New Year's Day. Oh, okay. No, I, I ain't got that for the truth for you. You hear me? It was New Year's Eve. It was electric sliding. We was getting in it, y'all. Get the leg up. Oh, right. Hey, what? Why is he saying in the end time, he's going to take one and leave the other? Two going to be in the field. One going to go the other. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna read scripture. I know, I know y'all need a scripture. I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since you need a scripture, let's go ahead and get the. I'll get the scripture because I know they're gonna say that man ain't read now. Matthew six and nineteen. We gonna get on into it. We're going to get on into it. We're going to get right into it. And we're going to start right there at 19. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all got. I think y'all was speaking to me, so I know anything about myself. We're going to do Matthew 6 and 19. Matthew 6 and 19. Y'all ready? Yeah. That thing th that thing start off pretty strong now. This thing in the red words. And I like to say the red words. He say, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. How do you do that? When neither mock nor us doth corrupt, and when thieves do not break through nor steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be seen, the whole body shall be full of light. But if the eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. My, my, my. We're going to pause right there for a second. Keep it there. We're going to come back. I know y'all need real folks to a scripture. So, so I want to I wanna, I wanna figure something out here. He said, he said, store up not treasures on earth. But store up treasures in heaven. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you store up treasures in heaven? How? It's not by words, though. Um, what do we do? It's not by words, right? How do you store up treasures in heaven? Because to store it up would be, by the way, y'all. The name of my title was Check Your Bank Account. 
How do you how do you store up chances in heaven? So somebody talk to me. If it's not by works. Now we understand that when you're storing something up, that means you're putting it away for a certain time. He didn't say spend money. He said store up. That means save to build an account. Savings. You know, sometimes we get a checking account. But we don't get a savings. Come on, somebody. Because the money leaves as quick as it comes. Right? Because the new chains came out. Sheila and them got that new car. I got to get me a new car. That new Louis bag came out. I got to get me a bag too. So when do we store or save or mount up if all we do is party and dance and play? It's the same thing as spend. If we continue to do as the world does, when do we store up our faith? When do we build up in our hearts? This is the bank. This ain't state employees credit. This ain't Bank of America. This is the bank of our creator. This is the most important bank you will ever place anything into. When do we build up our faith? If all we do is play. Y'all can talk to me. Y'all can talk to me. Now I remember there was a time when we brought the new year in on our knees. But now, some of us still getting peppermint to get some of the stuff off our book. Now, because now everything seems to be okay. And it, that, that ain't hurt me. And this, this, yeah, I know what it used to say, but this is a new time, y'all. It ain't hurt me. That's what they call y'all. It ain't, it ain't like that. You can, you can, come on. You can. No heart. You do it. Do it. Does it? Because let me tell y'all how this message came to me. I was getting ready to make a purchase. And I had to think about that thing. I said, I'm going to go up and I swipe this card. What this thing will go through. <laughs> but he reminded me that I had a little thing called overdraft, overdraft protection. See, see when you when you build up, when you build up an account, and sometimes, sometimes somebody say, hey, Jamie, Let's go over here. And you say, nah, man, I'm going to stay right here today. I'm going to a little bit. You're building up an account. Then the next time, somebody say, hey, man, we're about to go out here and talk. Oh, and we're going to be some girls out here. And you say, nah, man, I'm going to stay here and pray. I'm building up an account. Then the next time, somebody say, hey, man, it's new here. We're about to study like it's 
So when you get to the point to where you at work, and that girl be getting on your nerves, and you want to bust her head to the like me, but you don't play bust her head, you just say a little something to her. You ain't going to go in your corner and get forgiveness because you know I didn't go out that time. I built up in the couch. I can step right back into my face because I know I have stored up my treasures. I got something to lean on. I got a little something extra in the bank. Baby, don't take yourself shot. I got a little something extra in the bank that ain't sweet. Go get yourself some I got a little something to Get your handling proper. Yeah. 
just the people who stole up the way you did. But it seems they got enough faith to know <laughs> that he's going to take care of them. See, birds don't have clubs. Huh? That's right. Birds don't got side pieces. Oh, oh, birds. <laughs> Do y'all know there's certain levels of faith that come with some? Do you do you know why you're persecuted? Do you know? Do you know what he's trying to steal? The word said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He put it in that order for a reason. See, we serve a Yah that is very on point. He does things decent. And in order, it says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, he comes to steal your, your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He don't care about your stuff. You hear what I'm telling you? He doesn't care about your stuff. He's using your stuff against you because that's what you serve. I'm reminded of a man named Job. See, Satan went, Satan went to God, right? He went to God and said, hey. Hey, look, bitch, if I take Job's stuff, he curse you. I bet you. If I take his stuff, he will curse you, huh? If I start bothering the stuff that he's serving, he will curse you. Yeah, I said, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, try it. You see, he took everything Job had. Job was a wealthy man. He said he took everything Job had. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? He took it. Let me take your car. Let, let me take your house. Let alone your wife and kids. How you gonna act? Will you curse your God and die? Oh, we hit the point. Job said, though you slay me, yet I will. See, Job understood something, y'all. Job understood that no matter what I do, I have to face. The fire. Fear will make you do something. Nothing else will. We don't teach revelations because we don't want to put people in fear to serve. I, I, I don't care about you being scared. Because fear does something nothing else will do. Fear will line you up with faith. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Fear will put you in line with faith because if you don't fear nothing, our kids are killing each other, daddy, because they don't fear nothing. You can't get some kids to do nothing because they know you won't do nothing. If I tell you to take out the trash and he know there ain't no repercussions, that trash is not going to get taken out. But if you know, if you don't get your rear ring in there, you get that trash like I told you. <laughs> but along with that fear comes faith. Because they understand if I do what my father's asking me to do, I can come to him boldly. 
See, Job understood that if he's taking me through this, if it's a lie when he stays down, what happens to me? I know whatever's coming on the other side has got to be greater. So we can sustain it. Kill. We think we're talking about lies. When he said kill, we think he's talking about lies. I'm trying to kill your mom. I'm trying to kill your faith. I, as a matter of fact, if I get you, I don't want you dated because I can use you. You can't do nothing with a corpse. We don't let it say what he's out. We don't know it from the enemy. We are being distracted by. That's why we keep partying with him. We are sleeping with the enemy. We be laying with him. Right next to him. Giving him the good pillow. And destroy. If I do the first two, I know there's a time coming <laughs> that you're going to have to go where I'm going. Oh, here we go. There's a time coming that you're going to have to face the same damnation that I got to face. He's here to destroy you. Do you hear me? The word says steal. Kill and A E D destroy. If we knew what it was, if we understood what that was, and that it's just a holy ground. You hear me? We're gonna get into revelations. This is starting to teach, and I'm just giving y'all a premise of it now. I'm trying to tell you. If we understood that. No matter how you eat that day, you got to get up. I told y'all last, the last time I spoke about the younger generation, this is how we school you. You only live once because every stupid decision you make come after bumping. I might as well, you know what? I ain't doing nothing else. That's that YOLO generation. You only live once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lie. Because when you hit this dirt, you got to get up and face the problem. It ain't nothing you can say. There ain't nothing you can say to explain away how he deceived you. I'm telling you, be ye not deceived. I ain't going to read it. Yeah, I am going to read it. I know y'all need girls need work. So we go in. Because I, I need y'all to understand what it's saying. Let's go over to, let's go, no, we're not over. We're in the same, we in the same scripture. Matthew 6 and 8. I talked about this a little bit earlier. I'm trying to get y'all to understand something. I'm trying to get y'all to understand something here. I'm trying to tell you why you can't break a loose from the things that you want to break a loose from. I'm trying to tell you. All right. Eight <clears throat> reads. Be not ye therefore like unto them. Who is them? Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things he had need of. Before you ask him after this manner, Therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the King, and the power, and the glory forever. Hallelujah. Why is he saying pray like that? Why? Why? Why is he not saying get on your knees and say, do you, do you, do you, do you? why is he saying pray like that? Why? Because it needs to be a conversation. When you when you're talking to him, it needs to be a conversation. I don't go up to Trudy and say, Trudy, 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 Trudy. What is that? What is that? Mail, 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 mail. What is that? What's that? He said, our father, we are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth. It's the conversation, y'all. Yeah, listen, big, big fellas. Look, man, I, I look, man, man I, I ain't got it. I'm just, I, I need a I need little song. This is a conversation. Because you can sustain this conversation throughout your day. This ain't something that you always got to go in the closet and do. If you learn how to speak to your father, it's a come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. I'm a little short. I need about $50. Because that's my day. We got a relationship. You understand? Yeah. When you're talking to a stranger, you say, Amen. Everybody ain't made this manipulation. Stop trying to manipulate them. Get a relationship with them, and you can go to him boldly. But if we always do what we want to do, and we don't build up an account or a relationship, with the Father, then we always come to Him manipulatively. You don't even understand that you're trying to manipulate Him. He's not moved by your tears. Is your tears don't move Him? You think He don't know what you're doing? I did. He told you not to do it. Hey, don't go over there. Don't. Don't you go, don't do it. Well, I'm just going over here. Walk your head and get it. Shut up. Shut up. Write that hush. Knock it off. Be quiet. Because I told you not to go over there. So now, since you bumped your head, you get a head bumping lesson. Because I.